Hello. So I imported some plants two weeks ago from Arrowed Market and I said at the time that I thought it was the most perfect unboxing I'd ever done. I don't even have the words right now. Nothing looked to be wrong at all, I just thought it was perfect. And a lot's happened in the last couple of weeks and I don't get me wrong, it was an absolutely incredible import. I'm so happy on the whole with the plants. But I think it's just kind of reaffirmed for me that perfect importing generally isn't a thing. Even if you don't see certain issues at first, it doesn't mean they're not there. There's some things that I really wish I could go back and say to myself two weeks ago, but we're gonna go through that as I take you through all of the plants and what they are looking like now. But first, if you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learnt over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And yeah, I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison uh, then versus now. I'm going to take you through what's happened, as I say, some of the things that I wish I had done differently, and just some general kind of tips for importing, I guess. So yes, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So firstly, just addressing the planty elephant in the room, I know that a lot of you will be aware that there is one specific plant in this import that might not be doing as well as the others. And I did actually, I know I said I was gonna do a two week update and kind of talk you through everything now, but I couldn't wait two weeks to deal with this plant and it was a pretty big rehab, so I did decide to do that as part of a video. I'll link that video down below if any of you want to go back and watch that. And I will get round to giving you an update on that plant since I did the rehabilitation, but I'm going to go through these in the order that I unbox them. So I'm going to start with the Hoya Undulata Reds. This has just made my day. This is, I mean, made my day. This has made me so happy because as I say, it's a plant that I loved so much and I just thought that I'd lost. So yeah, I, I could not be happier about that. I just look at the back of its leaves. Aren't they gorgeous? <laughs> I'm so excited to have this plant back, oh my goodness. So I'm still unbelievably excited about this plant and this is actually a really nice one to start with because it's probably been the easiest out of all of them. This is what it's looking like now. It's looking pretty much the same as when I first unboxed it, maybe a little bit fuller, a little bit more hydrated. But as I say, this is a Hoya that I've had before and I know that it is one that when when things start going wrong with it, and I think this kind of applies to a lot of Hoyas, but when things start going wrong, it often doesn't give you much, it doesn't give you much warning and it can take quite a long time to start showing. So I'm not saying that I'm, to be honest, I'm not saying I'm out of the woods yet with any of these plants because I know two weeks is quite a small amount of time in the grand scheme of things. When I first moved in here, I had some plants that took three or four months to start showing me that they weren't happy in their conditions because acclimating can take a little while. But I think so far this one seems happy. I haven't lost any leaves. Its it, its roots look quite good. I um I've put this one into into the Lechuza Pond equivalent by Soil Ninja. This is just a semi hydro mix that I really like using for Hoyas. Its roots in there look healthy. Um, this is also an old candle jar that I just melted the wax down and I'm using again because I really like these. I'm using them a lot at the moment and I think they look lovely. But yeah, it's one that, as I say, really hasn't given me any grief and I'm just really excited to be able to show you in a healthy state because not all of them are looking as beautiful as this one is now. But yeah, I can't wait to watch this one grow. My aim is to try and get it back to the same stage as the Hoya Angelata Red that I had before. That plant was just so beautiful and this one already is making me really happy so yeah i will probably do I'll, I'll probably maybe not a big updates video like this on all of them in one video but or maybe i will i don't know but i will definitely do updates on them over the coming months and let you know how they're doing uh but yeah that one is pretty good so far and then this one is the, Ho well, okay, so it was labeled Hoya SP Gla oh, Hoya, Hoya Glabra SP Sumatera. Oh, it's a weird and wonderful Hoya. 
So, so the leaves down the bottom look like that. And then the ones up here look very similar to, in fact, they look very similar almost to like the macrophylla. And then it's got this little tendril here and these leaves do sadly look a little bit floppy. But I actually think that that was two completely different types of Hoyas, perhaps that weren't labelled. So uh, at the time, all of the roots were very, very tangled and I just kind of assumed it was all one plant. But I think from the research that I've done since getting the plant, I think this is the Glabra sp sumatera. And this at the back here, if you look, it's got different shaped leaves the other one and although they're very similar and if anybody knows please correct me if I'm wrong but I think this might be a macrophylla latifolia maybe because I've got the um the one that in fact I got from Arab markets a couple of years ago now the uh one that was labeled a macrophylla red and that looks very similar to this one so I'm kind of thinking it's def I, I feel like it's definitely in the same family, so I'm not 100%, but I think they're two different types of Hoya. But I have, as you can see, potted them up together, and I actually didn't start, they didn't start potted up together. Um, after I finished filming that video, I kind of got everything out on the side, and also, annoyingly, I have, uh, I did film everything. I've been kind of like filming the acclimation process, but I mentioned this in a Patreon video the other day, I accidentally wiped the SD card on my camera, and I hadn't backed the footage up, and I've lost a lot of that footage, so uh, I will talk you through it instead. Um, but yeah, this one I popped into distilled water for about a day and a half after I first got it and then I did just go straight ahead and pot them both up in semi-hydro. Um, and then I was a little bit concerned about this one because I know it's got a little bit of yellowing here but I couldn't tell if I thought that was getting worse and I was like, I'd quite like to be able to monitor the roots better. So I got them, I, I just kind of went with my gut and I got them both back out of semi-hydro and I kind of took a look at their root system, did a little bit of root pruning, and I've currently, yeah, just potted them up together for no reason apart from the fact that I think they both enjoy a similar soil mix and I just had them both to hand. Uh, I did lose a couple of leaves on the vine coming out here. They were very floppy even when I unboxed the plants, so I think that's probably quite normal. And all things considered, I do think that both plants are doing really, really well. Similarly to what I said about the Hoya angelata red, the last plant, with Hoyas, they can be a little bit slower to start showing the signs if they are going downhill. So again, I think it's probably too early to say for sure, but for now, it's another one that hasn't given me too much grief. I did say before, Hoyas typically don't. I have got one that's going to completely contradict that, but yeah, on the whole, typically Hoyas are a little bit more robust and resilient when it comes to importing. Oh, and then this one, this is the Philodendron Bulmarks Variegated Mint. Oh my god, the size of these leaves. Oh my goodness, this is just beautiful. How perfect does that look? And I know obviously things can change as plants adjust. Like if this one loses a few leaves, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be overly surprised just because it's not quite as hardy and robust as the Hoyas. And I am so happy with how this one's doing. It looks really healthy, really perky. I feel like this would be a plant that would start to show the signs if it wasn't happy quite early on, I would have thought. So considering it's looking so good, now, two weeks on, I'm pretty sure, I don't want to jinx it, but I'm pretty sure it will be fine. Uh, this is another one that I've also got in a revamped candle pot, and I think it looks really nice in there. Um, you can see its root system is still looking really, really good. I've just got a little reservoir at the bottom, and then I just filled that, and this one actually, I've kind of run out of space by my window here, so this one's just been underneath the TV here, which obviously it has it has decent natural light, but I'd say it's on the more medium side as opposed to bright and direct, and I kind of wondered if that might not be enough for this plant, but as I say, it does seem happy. So yeah, that's where it's going to stay for the time being. I'm kind of toying, I've been, I've been thinking it for ages, but toying with the idea of putting a grow light underneath the TV so all of those plants there can get a little bit more light but 
yeah, for the time being, it seems really happy there. I have got a little bit of browning on this leaf here, but as I say, I mean, I don't think I actually lost any leaves when I first took this one out of the box. So if that's all the damage, then I am totally fine with that. But yeah, I just think it's a gorgeous plant. I love the variegation. I think it's so pretty. I can see that it has got some leaves that are, I mean, pretty much reverted. And that doesn't, I mean, it, when I say it doesn't bother me, I obviously don't want the plant to completely revert. Um, so again, that might actually be a reason to move it into higher light, but I'm gonna just see how it gets on for the time being. It is also putting out new growth, which is super exciting. So yeah, another positive one. And a not so positive one, or I mean, not awful, but one that's been a little bit of a journey is my Anthurium radicans. Oh my God. Oh my God. I don't think my mind has ever been so blown by a plant. Oh my God. Obviously it's all been pushed very much upright in shipping, but look at that. And look at those huge inflorescences just there. So literally the next day after taking this plant out of the box, it started to it started to get all of these brown patches all over the leaves, which actually is very similar to what happened to the Vichii. Fortunately, this one wasn't as bad. Um, but I just kind of assumed that they were cold damage. And I think in the case of this plant, they probably were. Um, and I did actually, I think, take a clip of this on my phone. So I'll insert the footage that I do have so that you can kind of see what I mean. Um, but with this one, I just gave the leaves that were affected a trim back. I know I could have trimmed back the whole leaf and the reason, because I know these leaves look a little bit silly now like this, but the reason I decided to just go around the brown and not chop those leaves completely is just because I wanted to, I wanted to kind of be able to monitor the leaf and make sure it wasn't getting any worse because if I'd trimmed around there and then I started to get the same like here, for example, then that might have been a signal that there's something more underlying going on with this plant and it wasn't just down to cold damage. Um, fortunately, when I did give it a chop back, it did stop the problem and the plant is now looking pretty perky, pretty healthy. I've got it in, um, I put it in a very tall pot because as you can see from the clip before, it was a very tall main stem. Um, but I have got it in Lechuza Pond and I've got a little water reservoir at the bottom there. Uh, but again, as I say, because it had such a thick stem with so many aerial roots, I've just wrapped some sphagnum moss around the top just there and then wrapped it in cling film. So I'm just going to keep that moss hydrated and hopefully that will then encourage the aerial roots to start pushing out and pushing down into the substrate and just help to encourage... Ooh! Oh, I've just seen something exciting. Um, encourage the plant to produce lots of lovely, healthy, full growth, which is what I very much hope it continues to do because it's such a lovely one. It's one that I've wanted for ages and yeah, it's making me very happy. Um, but I have just noticed something quite exciting. Uh, and that is, ooh, okay. Um, and that is that hidden underneath a little bit of twigginess that I just pulled back. It has got a really nice new growth point. And I've, it's hard to tell whether or not that leaf is a little bit shriveled. If it was starting to produce the leaf when, when it was transported, then chances are the new growth might be affected. But that's really encouraging that it is, it's trying at least. And as I say, two weeks is a very, very, very short space of time comparatively because plants do tend to take a while to adjust. So yeah, that's very, very encouraging and I'll be sure to let you know how this one gets on because yeah, I think it's just gorgeous. I think its leaves are so beautiful. So beautiful. And then this one is not doing very well at all. This is the Hoya Stenaki SP Papua. Ooh. Okay, so this is a Hoya, I, I don't think I'm familiar with this Hoya. And I mean, it's lovely, it looks very healthy. To be honest, I don't know if this is a Hoya that I would have chosen for myself, I'm just being totally honest. I'm not saying that I don't think it's beautiful. It kind of looks like something you might find growing in your garden here in the UK. 
So yeah, this one is currently not in anything. It's just looking like that, but as you can see from the way its leaves are just kind of flopping around, it's really not doing very well. Um, and initially I put this one into distilled water. It looked, it looked fine. I put it into semi-hydro after a couple of days and it started off okay, but very, very quickly, the middle of its leaves started to yellow like this. And when I, when I kind of pushed them, they are so squidgy. It's like it's rotting from the inside out. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, I think what my next step with this plant is probably gonna be, I'm gonna remove all of the foliage because it's not bouncing back. Like, look how squishy that is. I'm gonna remove all the foliage. The roots are weirdly okay. I think I'm probably just gonna put it into a propagation box and see if anything happens. I kind of feel like it probably won't. I don't know, like often when Hoyas get to this stage, if there's not that much, like the main stem is just very twiggy. I'm not sure this plant is savable, to be completely honest, but I'm gonna give it a go. I'm gonna give it a go. So yeah, I'll come back to you and I'll let you know if it's worked, but mm, I'm not not that hopeful currently. And on the note of prop boxing things and plants that aren't doing well, the next one was the Raffetophora puberula variegata. I'm actually not sure I've seen the variegated version of this, but if it's what I'm thinking of, it's stunning. Okay. Okay, so this one hasn't traveled particularly well, as you can see. I don't think much the foliage on this one is gonna be savable, which is such a shame. But to be honest, I would, I would have been completely shocked if I'd made it through this whole unboxing without at least one having something that wasn't perfect about it. So yeah, there are just certain types of plant that don't travel as well as others. And I know when I unboxed it, there wasn't exactly much to show you because it wasn't looking amazing even then. And I did give it, a, I gave all the foliage a chop back and I put the top section into water and then I put the bottom sections into a prop box and the top section rotted almost immediately. I, I had it in water, as I say, and it just turned to mush. The sections in my prop box are looking all right. They're like, nothing's happening as of yet. So I'm hoping that maybe in the next kind of few weeks, couple of months, they might start giving me some growth. But yeah, I currently don't have anything here to show you on that one because there's not a lot to show at the moment, but I will let you know. And then this next one's the Hoya SP Ake Splash. Ooh. So this one's got quite pronounced veination. It's almost a little bit similar to the Callistophylla in some ways, if you look at the veins. But that's really, really gorgeous. That is 100% something that I would choose for myself. I think it's lovely. Oh, and it's got some little new leaves coming just up there as well, which is very exciting. And I think this one's doing okay. So this is what it's looking like now. I did lose a leaf down the bottom and I've got a little bit of browning and damage on some of the leaves, but I don't think it's anything too serious. It's nothing that's majorly concerning me at the moment. The plant's not feeling quite as full as it was when I first got it, but equally it's not like completely deflated. It's just not quite as robust as you would maybe perhaps typically expect a Hoya to be. So it's another one, another Hoya that I really don't feel like, I don't feel like it's just, everything's fine now, I don't feel like I'm out of the woods yet, but the roots look healthy. Again, another one in semi-hydro in a little candle pot. Roots look healthy, I haven't, like the damage that I've got here hasn't got any worse. So I'm hoping it's gonna be fine. It's also got a nice little growth point there with new little leaves that haven't fallen off or anything like that. So I think the plant I think the plant's adjusting well. I just think it's a slow adjustment. Uh, and this is another one that I started off by the window and then I just, I've been having a bit of a clear up and I've just been moving plants about. And this one started to, as I say, it started to drop a leaf and it started to be a little bit browny. And I was like, is, is the light too, too much for it there? So again, I've put it similar to the Philodendron Bell Marks variegata. I've put it by the TV and it seems to be okay there so far. So yeah. 
I, I think I think it's doing all right, but I will, of course, let you know, keep you updated. I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it yet. It's, um, yeah, I think it'll probably be a Hoya, I hope, that kind of grows on me a bit. But yeah, we will see. And then finally, finally, so the Anthurium vicii. This is the plant that I was probably the most excited for. I, I honestly couldn't believe it when I unboxed this plant. It was, it was the best day. Oh my goodness. I don't even have the words right now. How amazing is that? Look at those leaves. I feel so, so lucky. I feel so lucky to own all of these plants, but I feel so lucky with this plant. I mean, my my little one years ago was, I, I treasured it so much. And this is just, this is just something else. This really is something else. This is just blowing my mind. Uh, and it's not been a straightforward process. Um, from with this plant at all and I don't know how much exactly is down to me and how much was damage in transit I don't think I'm ever gonna know the answer to that question but I think I could have done more um so yeah as I say if I go back and I could ask myself to check certain things two weeks ago then I absolutely would be doing that so obviously when I first unboxed the plant, the um, the foliage looked amazing, it looked immaculate, it was in perfect condition, as did the roots, the roots were really full, healthy, and I gave it a very good check before I decided to do anything with it, because I didn't actually put this one into distilled water first at all, I decided to just put it straight into semi-hydro, keep the reservoir very, very shallow so that it wasn't kind of overwhelmed. And I, as I say, I did check the plant as thoroughly as I thought I could, but what I wish I'd done is I wish I'd gone back and I checked the point where the petioles meet the main kind of chunk of the plant. Um, that's something I just didn't, I didn't do well enough. I, um, I gave it a little squeeze, it all felt full, it all felt fine. And because everything just looked fine, I was like, yeah, that plant's ready to go into semi-hydro. Um, and so I think I do actually have the clip of this one because I, I filmed it pretty much straight after I filmed the unboxing, but um, I, I basically tried to create a tower pot for this plant because I knew that I'd probably want to fill the semi-hydro quite high up. Um, and the reason that I did that again is because, like I said about the Anthurium radicans, it had quite pronounced aerial roots towards the top and something that I've been, a lot of you have been telling me to do recently is fill the fill the substrate higher um so i I, sh I should have waited to do that i think is the thing because i think if there was rot there already i probably just helped speed it up by filling it up so much i uh, i noticed the brown spots similar again to this one i noticed the brown spots start to appear within the first day literally the next morning i woke up and i was like oh i was like something's going on um but as i say with both of these plants i was like it's probably just cold damage related like keep an eye on it let that brown dry out then i can just cut around the leaves um and that's exactly what I did with this one. And with the Vichii, it just got worse and worse and worse. And to, to the point that I was like, oh my God, okay, I feel like this is more than just cold damage. I lifted up one of the leaves to kind of give it a proper check and it just came away at the base and it was covered in mould. Um, and that's when I filmed that very frantic rehabbing video, trying to, desperately trying to save that plant. And since I filmed that video, um, the, the tops, because I, I put two bits into glass containers in sphagnum moss, and I was really, really hopeful for them. And I did actually end up doing a hydrogen peroxide treatment on both of them just to be on the safe side. But I've got both of them here, and that I mean, they're going mouldy. They're just going mouldy, look. And I really don't think anything can be done about that. I think the, I think the rot just goes too far down. Um... And honestly, it really, really breaks my heart because I was so excited about that plant. You can still see it's got a lovely root system in there. I'm not going to throw them away because I think weirder things have happened. Maybe there's, I keep saying maybe there's a chance they'll spring back. I think it is so unlikely. 
I think it's so unlikely, but until the roots start to rot, I'm not going to give up. I'm still going to keep them in good conditions, keep monitoring them. I've kind of left the mould on to show you today, but I think probably just keep spritzing with hydrogen peroxide. As I say, I would really be amazed if, if they did anything, but who knows? Who knows? So yeah, that is a bit of a sad one to end on, unfortunately, but... But like I say, importing just is not always straightforward. You don't take into consideration the fact that not only have your plants travelled a very long distance to get to you, they've been exposed to lots of conditions that they're not used to. Not only that, but they will have also, if they are, for example, like Indonesian imports coming to the UK, like they were in my case, they will also have been through the phytosanitary process. They will have been chemically cleaned. There's just lots of things that can kind of throw them off kilter, throw them out of whack and mean that you do experience issues like this. Um, I know when I first posted about my VCR, some of you were like, oh my god, are you going to contact our Aroid market? Are you going to say that this isn't on? And it's difficult with that. I mean, so obviously I was sent to the plants. I didn't pay for these plants. So I am grateful to just be sitting here with plants that are alive right now. Um, but if I had purchased these plants for myself, I might be tempted to drop them a message However, I wouldn't probably expect a replacement because this is just a risk that you take when you import. Like, if I had paid to import these plants, I would have known the risk was there. So, yeah, it's a tricky one. Let me, like, this is a, a, an interesting conversation, actually, and I'd be interested to know what you guys would do as well. So let me know in the comments below. But as I say, I will continue to keep you updated with these plants. I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying acclimating them. I know it hasn't been straightforward, but yeah, I'll let you know how they get on. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next video. Stay sexy, plant lovers.